Okay, hi everyone. It is now 11 a.m. and we are going to get started. Thank you so much to everyone who is joining us today at our Get Ready for Residence webinar. My name is Christine, my pronouns are she, her, and I am part of the Campus Housing Marketing Team. I will also be your host for today's information session. We are so excited to see so many folks joining us virtually and hope uh, that this next hour can be used to give you a better understanding of the supports in campus housing and to answer some of your questions that you may have. So let's get started. We'd like to start by doing a land acknowledgement, acknowledging that we live and work on the traditional territory of the Attawandaran, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee's people. The University of Waterloo is situated on the Haldeman Tract, the land promised to the Six Nations that includes 10 kilometers on each side of the Grand River. We recognize the land to express gratitude, appreciation, and honor the Indigenous people who have li been living and working on the territory that we are residing on. As a settler, it is my responsibility to continue to educate myself on how I can implement the TRC calls to action in my personal life and workplace, and I've completed a course by the University of Alberta called Indigenous Canada to provide a better understanding so I can better in my role here at the University of Waterloo. Before getting to the presentation, we want to acknowledge that some have many questions regarding the University of Waterloo's COVID-19 response, and we appreciate that. As the pandemic has shown to have its ebbs and flows, we will continue to remain committed to delivering a safe and outstanding fall term. If you haven't done so already, please visit the university's coronavirus information page for any updates for the fall term. The university's COVID-19 website can also be found as a heading on any page on the University of Waterloo website and will also provide additional information and updates related to COVID-19. As of right now, the mask mandate has been lifted on campus and vaccines are not required. However, please note this is subject to change and we recommend that you stay up to date on your vaccinations as it can change at any time. Okay, throughout this webinar, if you have any questions, please use a Q&A box located to the right of your screen, and they can be answered by our campus housing staff who are ready to respond. We have more people attending than we have staff answering questions, so thanks for being patient as we work through them all. The webinar will run till noon, and we should have enough time to respond to all of your questions. However, if you have any additional questions or maybe some follow-up, um, an email address that will be provided at the end of the presentation that you can reach out to. In the case of technical difficulties, this presentation is being recorded and will be posted on your Faculty Learn course page, which you'll be able to access starting in August. If you have any questions regarding the recording of the fac a Faculty Learn course modules, please feel free to reach out to the Student Success Office through email student at uwaterloo.ca. So if you miss something, don't worry, you can always go back to give it another listen. Okay. Uh, now that we've gotten our housekeeping items out of the way, let's talk about campus housing and everything that you can expect when you move in in September. And trust us, we are just as excited as you are for the fall. Throughout our time together, we'll introduce you to a few campus housing staff members who will, walk, who will talk about our facilities, student life, residence life, and residence learning, and of course, move in. At the end of the presentation, we will also have a live Q&A, and you can get all of your questions answered before you head out, but you can also send in your Q&As now. A big thank you to our staff that are joining us today, Brad from Maintenance and Security Services, Quinn is a current student and she works for Campus Housing as a Residence Ambassador. From the Student Development and Residence Experience team, we have Arifa, our Residence Life Coordinator, Haley, and our, res or, sorry, Arifa is our Residence Life Coordinator and Haley is our Residence Learning Coordinator. And last but not least, we have Drew who will be filling us in on all things move in. Okay, so enough talking from me. Let's get started with some of our guests. First up is Brad, who is our manager for maintenance and security services. So Brad, can you give us a little overview of facilities? What do you do and how are you preparing for the fall? Hi everyone. Hi Christine, thanks so much. Yeah, my name is Brad, I'm, uh, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, so I work in facilities. This, I just want to thank everyone for being here. This is actually my third year getting to do this presentation, so it's pretty exciting to be back again uh, and giving a little overview of facilities. 
Uh, our facilities team is our, like our facilities unit is broken into four smaller teams. So we have a capital improvements team, a residence hospitality experience team, the maintenance team, which I'm the manager of, and then an after hours team. Uh, we're going to be talking about the latter three, uh, or I'm going to be talking about the latter three on these next few slides. The capital improvements is our larger projects. It's things that you that a regular student probably isn't going to see firsthand on their day to day. Uh, but they will interact with residence hospitality experience, which is another fancy way of saying our cleaning team, uh, the maintenance team, which is uh, which is the team that I work with, uh, and we're in charge of simple and pretty simple maintaining uh, the common and private spaces of all our residences and making sure that everything's working properly. And then the after hours team, which is a combination of both cleaning services, the residence hospitality experience, and maintenance, uh, but just in any times where they aren't where we aren't in business hours, so. Um, evenings, weekends, holidays, things like that. So I work, my our, jo our, our goal is to kind of work it with an essential group of frontline staff, uh, create a, a safe environment for students and staff as we wait for um, for students to arrive for fall 2022. So we're, we're hard at work. And of course, my phone rings. We're hard at work right now uh, doing that. Big part of that is the safety aspect of our buildings. A little bit different moving into this year than the last couple of years. So we're really excited to kind of get back uh, back to it um, in in a way of in being ready to greet students uh, the way that we have in, in previous years. So we're really excited about that. OK, thanks, Brad, for helping us get a better understanding of what you um, and your team does. We get a lot of questions about bathrooms and cleaning. How is this managed um, in traditional style residences and suite style residences? Totally. So before I answer the bathroom question, I'll talk quickly about kind of our staff. So. Um, Maintenance and cleaning staff, both the residence hospital ex experience staff and the after hours staff, you'll see 24 hours a day in a variety of ways. Um, you can contact us via email in person. Um, you can always go to the front desk and they can help direct you to someone. But the big thing is, it's just, you know, don't be afraid to, to introduce yourself, ask our staff anything, any questions that you have. Facilities are an incredibly friendly group. Um, we don't just deal with facilities. If you have a question and we're not and we don't have an answer for you or it's not facilities related, we can always point you in the right direction. So we're a good resource and a good frontline resource uh, for a lot of different items. In terms of bathroom cleaning, uh, we have two styles of residence. Obviously, there's suite style residence and traditional style residence. In a suite style residence, it's up to the, the occupants of the suite to clean their washroom themselves and ensure that the washroom is in is you know up to the standard that is comfortable for everyone living there. So we encourage you all to you know work with your roommates and ensure that everyone uh, has the washroom in a state that that they like it. Uh, in traditional style, we do clean the washrooms a minimum once per day, um, as well as the common space washrooms throughout residence. Okay, that sounds great and definitely makes me feel like um, I'm be move I'd be moving into a space that is well cared for. Um, and what if something happens in a student's room or on their floor? How do they go about contacting your team? Yeah, so the easiest thing to do uh, in terms of both residence hospital experience and maintenance uh, is to utilize the, the different methods to contact them. So the responsibilities for, res for, for RHE, for our cleaning team, is the, upkeep, is the upkeep of the common spaces and common washrooms um, through all of our housing communities. And again, like I said previously, they are a great resource that are available. Uh, they're they're knowledgeable, they're experienced. You can connect with them for directly on the front line, kind of on the floors or throughout the throughout the buildings. Uh, you'll see them um, most days and most nights. And so they are an easy uh, resource to, to to talk to. And again, they can point you, point you into a lot of different directions. In for for my team, for the maintenance team, uh, you'll see them less on the front line. Uh, but you can reach them again via email or by coming to the front desk and asking an FDA um, for a little bit of assistance as well. So when you, whenever you have an issue, if there's a problem in your room or a problem in a common space that you identify, every residence has its own unique maintenance email account. You can email them and the team that I work with are the ones that, that uh, respond to that email and prioritize any of the issues that need to be resolved. Okay, amazing. Uh, thank you for sharing all that with us, Brad. Um, and Brad, you lived in residence when you came to the University of Waterloo. Uh, did you have any pieces of advice for students moving into residence this fall that you want to share? I did. I lived in I lived in Ronay Village. Uh, for anyone that's that's headed there, uh, I had a lovely time, and I give, I'll give the same advice that I give every year, which is just get involved. You get out of residence. Uh, the experience that you kind of put into residence. So you know, put yourself out there, try new things, meet new people. 
Uh, you'll really be amazed at what a great uh, you know, a great experience and learning opportunity that campus housing is when you take advantage of all that we have to offer. And so don't be afraid to kind of challenge yourself to step outside of your comfort zone. Okay, I love to hear it. Uh, thanks for all that great advice, as well as all the information you provided today on how you and your team are working to keep residents in great shape for our incoming first years. Thanks, Christine. If yeah, if anyone has any other specific facilities or cleaning questions, Brad will be able to help answer those at the end of our presentation. Uh, now we're going to move on to our student staff, Quinn, who is currently a residence ambassador for Campus Housing. Quinn, are you able to tell us um, a little bit about yourself and your role? Hi, everyone. My name is Quinn and I'm in my fourth year electrical engineering studies right now, and I'm a residence ambassador with Campus Housing right now. Great, so you have been doing a great job this term as a residence ambassador leading campus housing tours at UW, UWP. Do you mind sharing with us a little bit about your residence experience? Uh, where did you live and uh, what was it like? Yeah, I'd love to. So I lived in residence during my first year in UWP. I was in stream four, meaning I will stay in campus for the fall term and the spring term. Um, before moving in, I was very excited to see what was to come, but at the same time, I was quite nervous about leaving home and live elsewhere for the first time and also making about new friends. But thinking back now, I'm so glad that I live in residence because um, the building I live in turned out to be all engineering students, which, mean, which meant more connections and made it easier for me to start conversation with others. I also have um, a great memory that I still remember to this day. So it was when my friends and I were up late finishing an assignment for um, a math math course that was due in 1159. We want to get a bite to eat after we finish it, but we didn't know where to go. So we went across to the plaza and grabbed a breakfast burger past midnight. Um, I love it that there's always someone by your side when you need them. And I also like that UWP is close to the Waterloo Park. I like to take a stroll in there when I get really stressed in the exam season, and that really helped. I also have a fantastic Dawn. So for those of you don't, who don't know, I like to think Dawn as the cool parent in your floor because they care about your well-being and try to make your residence experience as epic as possible. And the support from the entire residence team, whether that be the front desk assistants, my Dawn or the maintenance team, they were incredibly amazing. And any concerns I had about being away from home or adjusting to this new environment were put ease with, with, with their help. Okay, thank you, Quinn. Um, those bits of advice about your own experience can definitely be reassuring for our new students to hear um, from someone who's gone through it before. So you've taken part in a number of opportunities within housing for students. Can you talk about some of those with us? Yeah, so my first opportunity to get involved in, um, in housing was as a residence ambassador too. And my responsibilities consisted of giving tours of the residence and my personal room to prospective students. A huge reason I took on this role was because I want these students like all of you to be aware of the many perks of living in residence, as well as share my personal stories and experiences. I know how important it is for um, the first year experience to be um, to be set, and I wanted to be share. I want to share that with all of you to ease any concerns about residents. Okay, that's a great point. Um, as a lot of students don't know, they can also live here in their upper year. Uh, is the upper year experience different? Would you find? Um, Yes and no. Some great aspects about living in residence as an upper year student is that all the support services like your Dawn, residence life team, or academic supports will still be readily about available to you. Being in residence also give you access to exclusive study spaces and you always be surrounded by like-minded like academically driven peers. You also have the luxury of being near campus and within a short walking distance to all the eateries and buildings. 
in terms of leasing, the prices for housing are all inclusive and only require that students make one payment at the beginning of the term. Another worry that many students encounter is subletting. So considering many U Waterloo students are in co-op with campus housing, they offer flexible housing contracts where you would not need to worry about finding a sublet. Hey, those sound like some great things to keep in mind when planning. Uh, jumping back to what you said before, you mentioned that the residence ambassador position is open to incoming first year students. Uh, what are other options um, for students to get involved and how do we find out about them? Well, I would I would say there are tons a lot more. So mm -hmm. residence ambassador is just one of these exciting opportunities that allows you to share your experience about residence and of course it's paid. You get paid doing this. There are opp other opportunities like volunteering, executive positions and jobs. They can all be found on the campus housing website. And this resource was definitely a lifesaver for me when I was trying to get involved in campus activities. OK, so um, definitely a good resource to keep in mind, and it's great that all opportunities can be located on one website, our campus housing website, uh, for students to keep an eye on. And finally, Quinn, uh, what is some advice that you would give to our incoming first year students? Well, my first piece of advice would be take your residence experience as your first adulting lesson. So since you're living by yourself now, you need to uh, take care of the housekeeping, cooking your own food, feeding yourself. And since I live in a Swiss style dorm, I need to cook my own food and I have to also manage my own groceries. Um, also being other things like your laundry, uh, taking care of the garbage too, it's important. And the next advice would be make use of the social resources. As a stream for a student, I had to begin my search for a co-op job quite early on, like first month in, um, when I was first month into my school, my study term. So my Dawn, she offers such a big help through this time. Um, she reminded us to keep an eye on deadlines and Hold resume, hold resume critiques to fix our resumes, and even hearing about their own experiences as first year students finding their co-op jobs is was really helpful and um, take took away some stress for me. Um, they made this process easier. Um, I'm glad that and grateful that um, I have social resources around me, telling me that how we're feeling, how our feeling um, of stressing over not finding a job was normal and there's actually no need to stress. My last piece of advice would be to make use of the physical resources as well, particularly the study halls. Sometimes the separation of your living space and working space makes you more productive and especially in the summer, the air conditioning in the study halls helped a lot because um, unfortunately UWP um, UWP we sell does not offer AC, but depending on where your classes are, it can be very convenient. Okay, thank you so much, Quinn, uh, for all that great advice and giving us a little more insight into the student student experience at campus housing. I hope that all of our incoming residents are able to have a, as great a time as you are, and uh, we appreciate you opening up to share your experiences with everyone here. Thank you too. So now I'm going to pass it over to Arifa, one of our residence life coordinators. Uh, Arifa, hello. Are you able to tell me about the role of a residence life coordinator and how do you work with students and what are the kind of things that they would come to you for? OK, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. This is my first time presenting at this webinar, so I'm really excited to be here. Um, like Christine said, my name is Arifa and my pronouns are she and her, and I'm currently the Residence Life Coordinator for Minota Hagee in Wilmot Court. Um, however, I'm part of a bigger team. I work in a team of eight Residence Life Coordinators. Uh, part of my portfolio involves overseeing specific building areas and a team of Dons that live in those areas. Um, my role in residence is really 
ability to support students and to help them navigate their experience in university. And um, what does this mean? It means we often work with students who experience struggles and difficulties. Um, I provide support, listen to them and offer resources. Um, I also support students who may need support following the resident expectations within the community or if a student comes forward with concerns about their residence experience, um, here I can provide resources and opportunities for collaboration where applicable. Okay, uh, that's so great to hear that students have staff like you to support them through this transition into residence and throughout their entire stay with us at Campus Housing. So tell us what kind of programs students can look um, forward to that you and your team are working on for the fall. For sure. Um, I'm sure everybody is excited for the fall and even I am. Um, but apart from being excited, we also recognize that every community will be different and every student may have different expectations on what they would like from their residence experience. And so to capture this, our Residence Life Dons will be here to support students with their residence experience through multiple one-on-one -on -one connections. And during these connections, Dons can learn about what students are expecting from residents. Um, there are also going to be multiple um, monthly programs that are going to happen in residence in the fall. Uh, for the fall, we can expect programs to have a hybrid model. So there may be some that are online, in person, or both online and in person at the same time. We really want you to know that your Residence Life Dons are here to support your community building and create opportunities for students to connect and have a break from academics. Okay, so always something to look forward to. Uh, those pro programming events can be a great opportunity to take a break from studying and hang out with new friends. So Quinn did a great job of telling us about some student staff positions. Additionally, there are Residence Life Dons who are also students. Um, how are Dons different from RLCs? Really good question. So overall, Dons are full-time or co-op students who live in residence and they support students directly in their assigned areas. One of the major differences between Dons and Residence Life Coordinators, Dons will live on the floor or the area that they're assigned to. So they're assigned to a specific number of residents and they're really the ones that are front facing. So I like to call them like our front lines um, and they're the ones who are directly implementing the residence experience model. So they are that first touch point with residents through one-on-ones, social events and community meetings. Um, overall, Dons will receive RLC mentoring and will attend various uh, professional development opportunities throughout the term. Okay, so um, they're another fantastic resource. It's awesome to know that each student will be designated a Don who can help support them. Uh, something important for the first year student experience is supporting them with their mental health. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what's available to them? For sure. Um, we understand that supports look different for everybody, um, but one of the first points of supports will be your Residence Life Dons. Um, they're available seven days a week from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. There's always a Dawn on call. Um, however, some students may connect with their Dons through one-on-ones and share um, various needs that they have. Another point of support is your Residence Life Coordinators. Um, so you can book an appointment with your Residence Life Coordinators, uh, talk about what's going on and get bridged to other resources. Um, there's also peer support through MATES. So MATES is a student-run organization and it's just one of a fabulous group of students who can help you navigate your struggles or your experiences. Um, really, they can help you make a schedule that works for you, tell you about all the tips and tricks to get through university. Um, there's also support that, um, that's available to connect with counseling services on campus, the Student Success Office, or other resources on campus to support the student's overall well-being. And what does that support look like? what may look like your residence life coordinator sitting with you helping you to make an appointment or even walking you over for an appointment or just for intake and if we don't have the support that you're looking for we will help students get connected to, uh, to resources um, whether this is on campus or off campus. Okay so now that we've gone through the role of a Don what if students are interested in working for campus housing as a Don um, when they are an upper year student what should they be thinking about in their first year and how do they apply? Okay so 
Being a Don really involves someone who wants to support and facilitate connections with others. Um, and so if you're thinking about being a Don, I really encourage you to look at what your own Don is doing and thinking, is this something I want to do? Or go knock on your residence life coordinator's door and be like, hey, I want to talk about this. Tell me more about it. Um, and sometimes when students come and ask me, I like to ask them questions. So I often ask them, or, do you like being a leader and a team player at the same time? Um, do you enjoy working with students and can you balance being being a Don and also all your schoolwork and creating boundaries because being a Don, um, you really have to create boundaries sometimes. And then in terms of the application process, so for the fall cycle, applications will open at the start of the calendar year. Um, you will submit a resume and cover letter and the hiring process is twofold. Um, so if you make it through the first step, you will have a one way interview, which is just a recording of you answering some questions. And then if you make it past that, then there's a track style um, interview. So that's just a little bit about what it looks like. OK, that is so great. Uh, are there any other positions within residence life that are available to students? For sure, there is. Um, another great position is the residence experience leaders, or um, they're commonly called RELs, is a bit of a newer position. And so really, um, these are the RELs are students who will support DONs um, with the social aspect of their role. Um, and so REL is a good place to start if you're thinking about being a DON, but you're not sure if you want to be a DON, because um, it gives you like the closest lens possible of what like DONs will be doing. So if anybody's thinking about it, but they're not sure, then well is a great place to start. Okay, so no matter what, our incoming students can know that there are so many different people here to help them out. Uh, amazing. Arifa, is there any other advice you'd like to share with our students? Personal advice, maybe? For sure. Um, moving to residence can be exciting, but also nervous. I remember my first day moving into residence with all of these feelings, um, not knowing like, well, how is this going to be, but also excited to be there. Um, and one of the best advice that I can give anybody is just attend events, literally just show up. Uh, that's how I met one of my best friends. It was just I went to a program and, and that was it. Um, ask all the questions, talk to others and really just embrace this journey. Um, you're creating memories that you're going to talk about for years to come and you just want to be there and be present and, and enjoy it. Thank you, hey, Christine. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Arifa. Uh, this has been really helpful to learn, and I hope our students listening right now will be able to connect with their DONS and residence life coordinators once they move in. So now we're going to connect with Haley, who is a residence learning coordinator for residence learning. Um, so hi, Haley. The residence experience program, what is this and how can our students living in residence access it? For sure, our residence experience is guided by a curricular approach and we focus on the students and their learning. It's offered to everyone. Our four learning goals provide the direction and shape the experiences that we offer in our residence. Our learning goals are academic engagement, identity development, community engagement and responsibility, and developing resilience. We offer learning opportunities in multiple ways. Some examples where you may participate in the residence experience include community meetings with your floor hosted by your Don, having one-on-one -on -one conversations with your Don, and attending workshops or events happening in residence or on campus. Okay, Haley, um, what type of academic supports can students find within uh, their residence building and how do they access them? You can find many academic supports in residence. We are here to support your transition. Ultimately, our residence learning team is committed to helping you make connections with your faculty. In addition to our living learning communities, which I'll talk about in a minute, you can also participate in our drop-in tutoring program, which is open to all University of Waterloo students. The drop-in tutoring course schedule is currently being updated for the fall term, but our webpage will include when the drop-in tutoring is available, and students can attend these drop-in tutoring sessions as often and for as long as they want. In in addition, there are numerous study spaces and common areas students can use to stay on top of their academics. OK, so um, as someone who participated in the drop in tutoring in my first year, I can definitely recommend that this is a great option for students. Now, the fall term can probably feel like it's a lot to balance for first year students. What are some ways students can stay connected with their courses while also building relationships with their classmates, um, floor mates or uh, new friends? 
Yes, it can be a challenge finding a balance in your first year, and we're here to support again with that transition. As I mentioned before, there are a lot of supports and resources available to help students connect with their peers, whether that's through the living learning communities or tutoring. It's also important as a student university that you actively take the initiative to be involved in your learning, advocate for what you need, and share what is and isn't working for you. Don't hesitate to tell us what you need, share feedback, reach out to classmates, and show up and be present in your learning. We want to optimize your experience. When it comes to academic supports, there is so much available both within residence and on campus with your faculty. Ask your Don, peer leader, professor, a friend about them, and utilize those resources. Okay, perfect. Um, and do you have any tips for students on how to be successful when they're studying in residence? For anyone who did any studying, learning from home or in school, if you had a strategy that worked for you, try to maintain that routine. I always recommend that students try to find a space with few distractions when doing your work and use that as your dedicated study space. If doing group work, utilize the common spaces or any form of virtual connection to work with your classmates on assignments. When studying, it's important to remember, do not mix work and play. Start with short study periods and build to longer periods only as fast as you maintain concentration. Okay, hopefully students are able to find the right space for them so that they can be successful. And it's great to hear that there are different options outside of uh, just their room. Um, do you have any additional advice from for incoming students? Yeah, find what works for you. Take the initiative to reach out when you need it. How do you currently manage your time? Take the time to review those strategies and adjust as needed. University is a new experience for everyone, so don't hesitate to connect with your peers. Your experience will truly be what you make of it. Okay, Haley, and I know you also work with living learning communities, which are designated floors or areas within residence that are faculty specific. So can you tell us a bit about them? Our living learning communities are available for some programs and faculties that I'm sure some of you had indicated interest for when you completed your first year guarantee residence application and applied through the LLC application back in June. Oh, Haley, I think you accidentally muted yourself. So sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure those who are aware already applied back in June. These students will live near each other on the same floor have access to a peer mentor who is an upper year student as well as enhanced student support with academic programs and faculty initiatives. You can tell who is in an LLC and which LLC they are part of by the sticker currently shown on the presentation on their name tag outside their door. This fall, look forward to fun social academic events with students in your program or faculty, one-on-one -on -one mentorship, a welcome event with your faculty and much more. Okay, that all sounds really exciting. Uh, thanks so much, Haley, and I hope students are able to take advantage of some of those tutoring and studying tips this year. I'd now like to introduce you to Drew. Welcome, Drew. She is one of two move-in operations coordinators. So, Drew, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and your role as a coordinator? Thanks, Christine. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Drew, as Christine mentioned. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a move-in operations coordinator here at UW. Um, as a move-in operations coordinator, I organize all things move-in related, from traffic flow to appropriate signage. My job is to make sure that move-in is a positive and welcoming experience for all of you. Okay, um, so Drew is a questions experts um, and speaking of questions when can we expect to move in this year and what do we need to know yeah great question to kick us off so this fall move in will take place across four days so starting thursday september 1st to sunday september 4th if you're an international student you are encouraged to arrive on thursday september 1st in order to attend your international student specific orientation Please note that you can't move in earlier than September 1st, and this is just to ensure that our rooms are in tip top shape before your arrival. Um, should you require short term accommodations, we recommend you check our short, short term accommodations page on our website. And for more information about late arrivals, it will be emailed out to you in a couple of weeks. Should you not be able to arrive during this move in period? Um, all students who are moving into residence will receive an email in a couple of weeks that will allow you to select a move in time slot, as well as any additional information pertaining, pertaining to your move in appointment. 
So time slots are 30 minute windows, which will allow you time to pick up your keys. And it is very important that you pick a move in time slot because this is just to ensure that we manage traffic flow and prevent backup at our front desks. Um, you will be able to change your time slot up until uh, September 1st. So for example, if you picked 8 a.m. on Thursday, but actually 8 a.m. on Sunday works better for you, that's no problem at all. You'll be able to change your move in time slot through the same link that you applied through. Okay, um, I'd just like to repeat that. So move in start September 1st. We have a lot of questions in our inbox about that. Um, we cannot accommodate anyone earlier than September 1st to ensure that all residents' uh, buildings are um, up and running and ready to go for the fall. So um, those are some great tips, Drew. Uh, what about getting to campus? Are there any other options for students coming from the airport? Yes, on Monday, all eligible students were sent an email that contained important information regarding airport shuttles, as well as a link that allowed them to register through portal. This year, the service is available for first year international and undergraduate students, exchange students, and second and third year students arriving on campus for their very first time. Once your shuttle arrives on campus, there will be several directional staff who will help guide you to your pick up your keys and help you carry your belongings and locate your room. If you have any questions regarding our shuttle service or if you are eligible and didn't receive the email, please email ise at uwaterloo.ca. All right, great. So um, let's just say you just arrived on just arrived on campus. What should students expect to see uh, when they get here to move in? In a couple of weeks, the very important email that I mentioned earlier um, will that will also allow you to sign up for your move in appointment, but it will include maps as well that will help you navigate where you drive in, where you pick up your keys, where you unload your belongings, and it'll also include where you can park. Um, so please just monitor, keep monitoring your inbox. Throughout the four days of moving, there will be loads of directional signage as well as directional volunteers who will help guide you so you won't get lost. Um, you are permitted to bring as many guests as you'd like to help you move in as there are no longer limits to the amount of guests. Um, but if there are changes, then the university will communicate that to you. Um, in your unloading zones where you unload your belongings, there will be designated movers who will help you carry your belongings to your rooms, as well as move-in carts that will allow for easy transportation of your belongings. In order to pick up your keys, we require that you bring a form of government issued photo ID with you and have your student number ready to go. Keys will be given to you when you check in at the front desk, and this will also provide you with your exact floor and room number and a super fun lanyard which will have additional information on who to contact if you need help with maintenance along the way. Um, you will also receive your walk card, which is your Waterloo student ID. This is mine. It looks like this. It's very important. It will grant you access to various services on campus, such as printing, food services, meal plan, laundry, and more, including gym, transport, gym membership and transportation. So remember to upload your photo as soon as possible so that your walk card is ready for you when you're, you arrive. If your picture is uploaded by August 25th, then that will guarantee your walk card available for you at the front desk when you arrive. Okay, that sounds like a great option and uh, I would definitely take advantage of that. So your walk card is so important once you're on campus um, it'll, and it'll be super handy if students can pick it up right when they move in. Um, you can get access to all those snacks from the cafeteria right away. And now that we have heard a bit of, of information about move in, um, is there anywhere we can find out what we should and should not pack for residents? Yes, our website is a great resource. It will has a variety of packing lists to help you support your move in into residence. We have lists suggested for school supplies, appliances and electronics, clothing, bath and laundry, bedding and more. There's also information regarding what you cannot bring to residence, so please check out um, the packing list on our website. Um, we have lists that are specifically for suite style rooms that include kitchen materials that we recommend you pack, as suites do not include dishes or cooking utensils. Um, if your suite mates have shared their information with you, then I highly recommend that you contact them just so that you don't bring eight pots and three can openers and two plates. All right, packing is definitely something to not save to the last minute, so it'll be great to check out um, the list to plan ahead. What sorts of things should students be aware of when uh, finalizing plans to arrive on campus? 
So September 4th is the last date um, in our move-in period. Please note that this allows you time to attend your orientation, welcome week events, and your first floor meeting with your Don, where you can meet all your new floor mates and settle in. Okay, so um, how we've closed off each little interview, is there a, one piece of advice or something you'd like to tell students to look forward to this year? Yes, my advice is don't be afraid to start the conversation. Everyone's a little nervous coming to campus or living in a new place, so please don't hesitate to start a new conversation with your roommates or floor mates. Um, if you're shy, be sure to connect with your Don and residents to gain knowledge on support and fun events to attend to. There are great ways to meet new people who might have the same interests as you. Um, how I made friends in, for when I first came to residence was um, every single, like during the first week of classes, I would sit in my class and I would do a full 360 of introducing myself to everyone around me. <laughs> and now I have some really close friends in my program. Okay, that's really nice, actually. Um, thanks, Drew, and thanks to Arifa. Thanks, Haley and Quinn and Brad again as well. It's been awesome chatting with you, um, and we really appreciate having you here. So now for some extra details we want to highlight for you folks. Um, the advisors receive a, hall, um, a high volume of inquiries at this time. So here are, here are a few of the most common ones that we have yet to cover. So when do I pay my residence fees? Your residence fees along with your tuition will be due on August 23rd and that will be paid through your Quest account. For more information on payments, always check in with Student Financial Services. Next question. Um, if things change and you are no longer able to come to residence, what should you do? Not to worry, please reach out to one of the advisors by email, housing at uwaterloo.ca, and include your student number. And there you can discuss the options and ne next steps. If you're a study permit student, you can receive your full residence fees refunded if you cancel um, or if you, if you get, a, get in touch with us ahead of time. So what about students who are looking at deferring their offer of admission? Um, if you defer your offer of admission before August 1st, you will receive your deposit back. And finally, if you move into residence and decide it's not for you, our Residence Life team, as Arifa has talked about, are here to support you. Any questions or concerns about cancellations and withdrawals, please visit the Campus Housing website. So we have the W store on campus. Uh, it's a great place that you should check out. If you haven't bought any Waterloo swag or you're looking for some room supplies, give them a follow on their social media or check out their website. The, UW, the W store has tons of apparel. Um, they have items to outfit your dorm and many more. So you can order, you can also order your textbooks and course materials from the W store. Uh, just be sure to take a look. Food services is your go-to contact for any meal plan inquiries. If you need to add more money to your account, have questions about open locations or dietary restrictions, reach out to food services. Um, they also have an on-campus dietitian who works with students to navigate any dietary restrictions and accommodations. Food services has recently included an app to order your food ahead of time. Um, and there's also takeaway containers. Remember, if you're living in a suite style residence, meal plans are optional. Um, but if you're living in a traditional style residence, they are mandatory. Okay, that was a lot of information that we just covered. So let's recap what you should keep on your radar. First off, give Campus Housing a follow on social media. It's at UW Housing. We'll be posting more information throughout the summer, including important dates, move-in information, what to pack, um, and you can also DM us with any additional questions. Plus, during the school year, we'll post weekly updates of things happening in residence and on campus. Uh, second, make sure you are checking your Waterloo email address for move-in information and your invitation to book your move-in time slot. We'll also be sending you more email reminders throughout the summer, so keep an eye out for these. Uh, start getting your things together that you want to bring to residence um, and get ready to move in between September 1st and September 4th. And don't forget those packing lists that Drew mentioned. So for the remainder of the time here, we're going to answer some questions from that you may have if you haven't already put them in our Q&A. 
If you have any questions for our guests specifically, feel free to start posting them in the chat. And you can open the chat by clicking the three dots that appear when you um, hover over the bottom and clicking the chat bubble. So please make sure you are submitting uh, your questions to all participants or you can call them out by name. So we'll do our best to go over as many of these questions now. How is the chat coming along? Or the Q&A, I mean. Drew, there was a question about move-in day logistics. I don't know if you want to just come back on and give a rundown yeah, about that again. Uh, the move-in period is, starts Thursday, September 1st to Sunday, September 4th. If you're an international student, you're encouraged to move Sunday, September 1st. But if you're a domestic student, you're also able to move in that date as well. Okay, Once great. Yeah, once you sign up for your move-in appointment slot, um, you'll be able to view all of the times available to you. And if you have any questions regarding move-in, um, please feel free to email at movein at uwaterloo.ca. So M-O-V-E-I-N at uwaterloo.ca, and I can answer any other questions that you weren't answered during this presentation. Great, and you said that once you book your move-in, um, you'll receive an email with a map, uh, exactly where to park, where to drop your things, um, and then you just go into the front desk where, when you have your appointment and they'll give you your keys and hopefully your walk card. Yes. Yeah. Um, I see a question for those who don't have a home nearby. Where can we go for winter break and days before fall and winter term? So over the winter break, we do um, we do a complete shutdown. However, there is a December program um, for students who aren't able to come to go home. You can expect to find emails in your inbox um, um, mid fall uh, about that program with um, how to apply and the fees involved in that. Um, I see a question about parents visiting the dorms throughout the semester. We do have a guest policy that's on the campus housing website, uh, so you can check that out online. But um, uh, as of right now, we are permitting visitors in our residences. And then I know this comes into the inbox a lot too. Will I get any more information about my roommate other than their name? Um, so we are not permitted to give you any other information but their name. We recommend to students to take a look for, um, do a search through social media for, for, your, for your roommate. Um, and we also have uh, a feature on uh, the What I Am website where you can do an authenticated search with the name. So. I don't know, my name's Christy McDonald. I have a really common name. There might be 20 on our website, but if your uh, roommate has like a very individual name, they they might be, they might just pop up with one possible email address for you to contact. So um, that's really what we suggest to all, all incoming students when they're searching for the roommate. Brad, I know that I saw that there's a question about curfew. Um, are you able to address that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we we do not have a curfew in residence. <laughs> <laughs> no curfew. You can come and go from residence as you please. But um, 
you can only access uh, the building with keys, correct? So yeah. Um, yeah, if so it is late. Yeah, I can I can speak about that. So yeah. yeah, obviously you can come and go from residence as you please. If you are a a resident, a student resident, an occupant of that community, um, or or certain communities, uh, there are there are closures uh, and lock and, and locks uh, in place at entrances and side entrances of certain residences. I won't go. You know, every residence is set up a little bit differently. But basically, if you if you are an a, a resident of a specific community, you have access to that community 24 seven. If you aren't an, a, a resident of that community, then in some cases, um, certain areas may be uh, may get may get locked uh, for safety reasons. Um, and, and it just means access to those spaces are, are a little bit limited, but all main common spaces uh, that any general student would need access to um, is, is always available. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, and then can I ask you one more question? Um, students are, there's some questions in here about bringing in additional furniture, like can they bring in their own desk chair? Can they bring in room dividers? Is that permitted? Yeah, I've been trying to answer some of these in the in the okay. chat. These are great. These are good questions uh, and very common questions that are asked all along. Um, I'm not sure who I think Arifa might have answered or Drew answered the questions about what to bring in and what not to bring in. So there are uh, there is a large section online of uh, what you should be bringing, what you shouldn't be bringing. So we always um, advocate for students to go to those sections first in terms of um, Sorry, Christine, you said room dividers. What was the other what was the other one? Um, desk chairs. Yeah, so specifically with desk chairs, because it is, it is so common, um, there is a desk chair provided to all students in their in their unit. Um, you are allowed to bring a de your own desk chair, which many students do. Uh, it's just another thing for you to have to travel with. Um, so there is one there, but you aren't allowed to take anything out of out of it. So even if you bring a desk chair, the, the desk chair that is there has to remain in your room. Uh, in terms of room dividers, I did. I answered this in the chat. Uh, and this is kind of general. I would, I would, as someone who has lived in residence multiple times and now works in residence, uh, specifically on the facility side, less is more at the beginning of moving in. Bring less than what you think you need. Get comfortable in your unit, and then once you meet your roommate or live in a single room and understand how much space you have, then you can bring more things. Specifically with like the room divider question, um, although an, a, a non-permanent. Um, Item sometimes people put up sheets. Sometimes put up people put up kind of those like accordion style dividers. Uh, those things are are allowed, but uh, you know you have to work with your roommate on the limited space that you have. So really don't don't commit to anything until you've arrived in your space, kind of checked out your room, got to know your roommate, uh, and then and both of you feel comfortable and agree on you know how you're going to use your space. Maybe you don't need that room divider that you think you need right now because you're going to have a schedule or the room is set up in a way that feels more comfortable um, and more private. Again, rooms are a good size, but but they are limited and set up in a way that makes them um, most comfortable to use. So some, by, the more stuff you bring, you know, the more crowded a room can feel and that doesn't always work for everyone. So again, always I, I always say and I'll be here and so will everyone on this call on move in day. Bring less, bring less than what you think you need and then and then it'll make move in easier, which Drew I'm sure can attest to. Um, and it'll make it, it, you can always go out and get a few more things as you need, but uh, arriving with all this stuff just makes move in day a little bit more difficult. And then you end up sending things back with whoever's helping you move in. So hopefully that hopefully that helps answer all those questions. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Um, I did see another question about the beds at um, in Beck Hall at UWP. So they're no longer lofted this year where we have um, we reconfigured the rooms and we have two twin beds in the double room. Um, so yes, no longer loft beds with the desks underneath. We have the desks to the side in um, in a room that's attached to the double room bedroom. Um, there's a question about short term accommodations for uh, students who cannot move in or who arrive before September 1st. Um, you do have to pay for short term accommodations. So what we list on our website, they're just recommendations from us, um, but it's up to you uh, to decide how, how you want to proceed with that. So we still have a lot of questions, so we'll keep it open until 12. Um, how many engineering students at V1? Not sure. 
but there are a lot. There are a lot of uh, engineers at UW, um, a lot of math students at UW, so you'll find um, V1 will, will have a lot of students within your faculty. It's a big residence. Um, Drew, just a question um, about moving to. If someone can't move in uh, between September 1st and September 4th, what, what can they do if they say have to move in September 5th? Yeah, you will be able to move in September 5th. We're going to email out in a couple of weeks the late arrival process. It may be a form. It may be an appointment that you sign up for. Um, information regarding the late arrivals will be coming shortly. OK, great. So uh, once again, if you're moving in after September 4th, there'll be a late arrival form um, to complete. Just keep an eye on your email. Uh, we can't say that enough to keep an eye on your email um, so that you don't miss anything um, in the next few weeks because all information will be sent to you there. Um, there's a question, uh, which is a really good question. Once you move in, do you just begin living there? And um, yeah, you do. Uh, but I, I know it's a it's a really strange feeling, and everyone <laughs> when and everyone has been saying, you know, like it's been they they feel really nervous, but also really excited at the same time. Um, so if you're really unsure of what to do, and you have a few days before your classes start, um, definitely connect with your Don um, to find out what's going on. You can also, um, you know, just like like Drew said, like just start a conversation with someone. Uh, there'll be plenty of people on your floor. Um, if you have a new roommate, it might be great to like go out and uh, have lunch with them, have a dinner with them, go for a walk to explore campus. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely can be, I don't want to say difficult, but it's just really different transitioning uh, into university life, especially if you just left home uh, for the first time. But yeah, it's just take it as it is. Um, enjoy your first couple days and then before you know it, you'll you'll be in your new routine when your classes start and uh, you'll have like a, a better idea of your schedule. Um, is the orientation free? Yes, that is included. Um, in your residence experience, so no additional fees there. Uh, for international students, if no guardian is present for moving, can someone help us to get our luggage into our room. There's going to be a lot of people around and um, just like ask for a hand if you see someone uh, wearing a campus housing t-shirt or move-in t-shirt. Um, yeah, so there'll be there'll be lots of people around. Um, Drew, you also said that there are um, like carts or something. Yes, there are movement yeah. carts that you'll be able to give you have too many things or if they're too heavy, um, there'll be carts. Once if you're coming or if you're arriving on a shuttle, then there'll be people here to welcome you and direct you to pick up your keys. There's going to be tons of support. So someone asked, can I stay in V1 during my co-op term if my co-op is local? So we do have um, residence options for co-op students. Uh, if so, if you're a four stream student and you your co-op term is for the winter, uh, keep an eye on our important dates page on the campus housing website and um, there'll be an option available for applying for the winter term. We cannot guarantee that you will be put in V1. It's a lot like how the first year guarantee worked. Um, you could be placed somewhere else, um, but either way, if you're a four stream co-op student, you're gonna have to move out completely in December. Um, and if you're looking to live on campus, um, you can apply for the winter term um, through the campus housing website.
Um, I had this question yesterday too. Do residents have insurance? If something gets stolen, will we be uh, reimbursed? So we do not um, require you to get contents insurance. Um, however, some people have asked if you can, it's up to you. Um, but that's something um, that you'll have to decide on your own separately, how you want to deal with uh, your things um, while they're in residence. And when I say something on your own, so you'll have to search out, um, like do your own uh, research, get your own quotes from insurance companies for contents insurance. OK, so we're down to our last minute. Um, we do still have some questions that we'll try and answer. However, um, if something, if we weren't able to address something um, or we weren't, even, weren't able to get back to your question, um, you can contact housing at uwaterloo.ca. If you have something specific to your file, I would recommend including your student number just so that we can um, take a look at your, your file um, a bit quicker so we can get back to you um, with a better answer. But yeah, thank you everyone for coming today. Um, uh, this will be available um, on our website uh, through YouTube and it'll also be available through uh, the Student Success Office. So uh, thanks everyone for coming and we do look forward to welcoming you in the fall.